So you guys are in luck today. There's a double feature. We are going to be doing some blacksmithing with the Whitlock's Wood Fired Forge. And we have two separate projects going on. So just a, a recap here. So I've got all of the shelving. Well, I gave it away there. Book, <laughs> we're building a, a, a very nice uh, set of bookshelves uh, for Mrs. W in, in light, kind of, we're gonna build a little library section and we're gonna forge all the brackets today. And Jack is gonna be for, forging some coat hooks as well. So we went to the steel yard yesterday and picked up some various different lengths of steel. And I'm kind of, we're going to kind of make this up as we go, but I have an idea what I, what I want to make. So I'll be working with this, I believe it's inch and a half by three eighths uh, flat bar. Now what Jack is going to be working on here is I've given him a facsimile here or copy. This is what I want him to copy. He's going to be using this half inch square stock and he's going to be working on these. We need four of these coat hooks and he's going to forge these or he's going to attempt to forge these himself. So this is his hammer. This is uh, his first handle that he made. Not too bad. <laughs> so good job on that, Jack. And what else is it? So, and I will be, uh, so this is, these are the pieces I'm going to work with here. So first thing I'm going to have you do, Jack, is can you get the forge fired up and started? Mm -hmm. And I'll get everything ready. Yeah, if you can give me one of those, the bigger ones you have there, I'll make you a little feather stick. One of these? That, how about that one right there? Right yeah. Why does a feather stick start fire so well? Because it has all the small little things that can burst easier, right? It has more surface area. That's why a... Uh, so the longest burning log is always a round log. Why would that be? Is it, it has more surface area? Well, it has less water. surface area. It doesn't have anything that the fire can get a foothold in. Where when you have a sharp edge or anything that's split, the fire can get a corner burning a lot better. Maybe that's why they made log cabins in the old days. Well, they made log cabins simply that it was less work and it was they had enough tr enough things to worry about without spending a bunch of time on construction so when you're starting the forage we'll put those the feather sticks on the bottom mm -hmm. and that will get the flame going and then you can start cribbing up the smaller pieces so what i want you to do is i want you to put the the shavings the planer shavings down first mm -hmm. spread those make a little bit of those down there and then you can Lay the feather sticks, and then you can lay the small stuff. Do a crisscross, kind of crisscross like a pile of pickup sticks. Let's get those safety glasses on. Let the fire die down after you put the air to it, add your wood, and then crank it. Oh, that smells good, doesn't it? Maybe what we need is a big old steak or some venison. Cook some venison. I don't know why you couldn't do that. Keep the air to it. Let's get it nice and hot. It'll take 15 minutes or so before we have a good enough charcoal bed to forge with. Also, every time you use the forge, put a couple drops of oil in these and it'll lubricate everything, all the gears and the handle. So Jack's got a nice, good, hot bed of coals there. Took us, probably takes about 20 minutes or so to get the fire bricks all heated up, but it's, it's really good now. Nice hot fire. We got a bunch of wood cut 
And so you're going to get started. So you've got your hook there for your pattern. Um, Have that there where you can kind of keep an eye on it for inspiration. Right there. Okay. And uh, go ahead and get started, and I'll get started on my end. Yeah, it's just a little windy in here. What are you making? Well, I'm, I'm making a little um, punch, whole, uh, little plate here to help my punch. Punching. It's a very pretty place. Is it hot? Mm -hmm. It is. Let's get you. Uh, let's get you some uh, pliers to hold on to that with. I put those uh, vice grips on there for you. All right, that looks good. All right, take it to the. I have to say that. Because the vice grip you have to like move yourself instead of the piece. Doesn't it though? A little bit older than me, but doing the same thing that I'm doing. That's when. Some younger than me. At your age is when they would have started their apprenticeship. I thought it was 12 that they started. Yeah, sometimes earlier.
Uh, she wanted to take the paddle boards. We need to get a... We're not really building anything right now. We're kind of playing, aren't we? Well, we're... Yeah, we're trying to. I need to... We're trying to play. I need to get a better anvil. I think that looks really good, Jack. Can you set that back down there? Let's That's see. how you make boiling water. That looks good. So you're going to, you're going to make, you said all your hooks are gonna be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So today for us, I guess Jack and I are just, um, we're, we're just learning this. We, we're um, self-taught, mm -hmm. uh, we're amateurs. And there's a lot of things that, the basics that I don't know how to do. I mean, I grew up fabricating steel, but with my granddad, but it was, you know, using cutting torches or plasma torches and settling torches. Uh, blacksmithing um, is a completely different deal. And I don't at all consider myself to be a blacksmith, but I, I want to be one. And so this is, we're just practicing a couple techniques because there's some things that we want to build uh, for the home. Uh, what I, what Jack is working on is I kind of, you know, interesting thing about this is that I kind of was thinking, okay, I'm going to make you I'm going to have you or make you build exactly this. But when you started working, you said, I, I don't want to build it like this. I want to build it my own way. I want to put, you know, how I want it to look. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great. And I, le I learned a lesson from that to don't, I don't necessarily always have to project on you to tell you how to do something, but tell you what needs to be done and let you figure out how the best way to do it. Because my way is not necessarily the right way. I can give you guidance and I can point you in the right direction, but ultimately you're the one that creates it. You're the artist and it's your, about your vision and about what you see. I just came up with an idea for it. What's that? What if I took some of those nails in the wall and I put them like right here on the side and make it, and make it very menacing? Oh, well, I don't <laughs> think Mamba would like that when she ran into it and with the vacuum. <laughs> so can you show kind of, what you, kind of what you came up with? Of course, we're not done yet, but today was kind of an experiment. And then um, um, next time we're going to go about, you know, get, try to get, get everything finished up. So we just kind of uh, made it so that it's... Can you come over here? I think I got the mic on me. Okay. So I kind of tapered it down. Just sit down right here. Like uh, I made it thinner around there. Right. And then I just curled it over and that was... It took two hours. Yeah, it took two hours. That, that's, how you, that's how you show we're noobs and amateurs. Well, the thing is, is that you don't have a lot of strength. You can't swing a really big hammer, and this is pretty thick stuff. We should probably had something about half that thick. But you did good with it, and, and I like what you've come up with. So next time, we'll, we'll cut that, and then you can smash it down, and we'll punch a hole in it, and then we can make some more. So what I'm working on, and, and I was... I'm not building anything today, but it was just working on some techniques is, is that I'm building, uh, I want to for, forge all the brackets for our library bookshelves. And uh, something I hadn't, I don't think I've ever done before was punch a hole in steel. And that's something that I w was working on today. And did you see the little, when I punched it, the little end came out? So I was practicing on that as well as bending. And I also want to flare the end. And you can see, maybe you can see right there, we've got just kind of a bit of flared end. It's just those little subtle differences. If I were just to take this flat bar and just bend, 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 um, and you put it on the wall, it doesn't look very special. There's nothing interesting about it. But by just having that little bit of a, of a detail on there, um, I think makes all the difference, don't you? Mm -hmm. And maybe you could, maybe you could pound it in the middle careful. a little bit and then just pull it up a bit and make it so that it looks kind of like it's got little wings coming up. Yeah. Or something. You know, honestly, that's outside my ability right now. I need some more practice. Well, you could use a, you could use the small side of a hammer, the pointy side, and just smash on that a and bit. And split it down. And then use the, the harder side and just put, smash it along here when it was hot and push it up. Well, great. You can show me how to do that next time. It's only an idea.
totally good idea. Well, nothing wrong with ideas. All right, so just a little, uh, in, just a little, little practice session today. But anything you want to add? No. All right. Not really. We got to go in. We got a phone call to make, and then we'll see you next time. We'll start. We'll start building the real ones. But I think I have figured out. There's a couple tools that I need to build because what I what I'm realizing that this is so hot that I have my regular punches, the punches are too short. My hand is so close to that steel that I feel like it's burning my hand. So it's, it's a, there's a lot to learn. It's, there's a lot to how to configure the, this work triangle, you know, where to place the anvil, where to place the forge in relationship to the vise and working with two people in hot metal. It's, it's, man, it is a complex dance. You know what, Papa? What's that? It looks like you need some lemonade. Yeah, I do. Can you make us some lemonade? I'm hot. Because I've noticed our family doesn't normally have drops of sweat trickling down any part of their body, and you have drops of sweat all over you. Well, I guess, and that's why we even started early before the heat came, but it's, it's hot. All right, well, thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Maybe we'll get something built. Yeah. Beautiful Friday afternoon on the homestead. Looking forward to it this evening. Boy, we've got a special evening plan. We always look forward to the coming of the Sabbath at sunset. Mrs. W has got homemade ice cream going for us. The first time she's got a homemade ice cream maker and we're going to make it. We are excited. So always nice. We always try to have a special dinner and it's fun getting ready for the Sabbath, having everything ready and all of our work done. And to be able to know that you have a 24 hour period where you don't get guilt free. Just be with the family, do whatever you want to do, but completely completely guilt-free from all of the work, even though there's lots of things around that need done and have been left undone. What a blessing it is. What a blessing. I'd, I would, if you're a family, if you have a family, and even if you're not religious, I would so strongly encourage you, pick a day, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, and, and have a referendum on 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 the internet and, and on work. Uh, whatever it is, you have to, you make your own rules. There's no right or wrong. It's all just depends on your family and your condition. And, and set that aside. It's something you look forward to. Make it special. Find out what it is your kids like and or what your spouse likes. And make a special meal or do something nice for them. And it is it is a tremendous blessing. There's a lot of wisdom in that. So I mentioned in the last video, I think in the end card, uh, something about uh, the, only, the only way that, uh, that, that humanity can truly find peace or a peace is through uh, being reconnected to be connected through Christ, through God. And many people took issue with that, and not in a mean way. Most of them were very sincere, and it was something like, you know, I'm not a religious person. I'm actually an atheist, and, and, I, and I, I disagree with you on that. I disagree that, because uh, I, th some people said, I have personally have found peace, and who are you to say that I'm not? And I'm not saying that you haven't found peace, but the thing that's different that you may not know is, in the way Christ put it, he says, I'll give you a peace that defies understanding or defies all logic, I'm paraphrasing here. It's a peace that you can have in the calm, you can have a calmness, a serenity, even though life around you and, and this, your situations and, and it is in turmoil and uncertainty, you can have a calmness and a joy and a peace that defies all under understanding, and that's what he means by that. And as I was trying, sitting here thinking about, you know, how, how do I convey this and what do I want to say in the end card it was it, it's a silly analogy and it's not really like it but I'm going to give it it's like the piece you're talking about that you may have separate from God is like plain macaroni noodles right maybe you really like plain macaroni noodles and and you've eaten them and and you found that it's your favorite thing and I just love it just love it it's as good as it can get but what you don't know is that those macaroni noodles could even be better you can add maybe tomato sauce, some fresh grated Parmesan cheese, maybe even turn those macaroni noodles into a, a fabulous, uh, uh, um, what was I'm looking for, a, a, a pasta, a, um, <laughs> a galzone, a pizza, add some bread and some fresh olive oil and a beautiful glass of wine. And those once, th those noodles that you saw, thought were so fantastic, now they become, well, they're not really the same, are they? They can't really compare to what they could be so i don't disagree that people have been able to find peace but it's not the peace i'm talking about it's the plain macaroni noodles but you can have the whole course you can have the full meal which is so much better and once you have it and once you get a taste of it you could never go back that's what i'm talking about so thanks for watching and um 
gather your families together. May God bless you and, and be with all of you. May his peace be upon you, whether you're a believer or not. Remember, no one is judging you here. You're, everyone is welcome. And I've been often asked, you know, would you prefer to live next to a Christian or an atheist? And I said, I would prefer to live by the person that is the nicest, that is the kindest, and that is the most thoughtful. That's what I would prefer. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you guys on the next video.